This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back, if you didn't figure that out already. <laughs> this is Think Tech, Hawaii, the state of clean energy by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. My co-host, Mike Hamden. Mike, take a bow. Thank you, Jay. Good to be here <laughs> nicely, again. Nicely mm -hmm. done. Okay, two special guests before the break. Donna Moon, a law and electric, talking about your new app. We're so excited about that. And Marvin, uh, Marvin Buencanseo, he's going to talk about Hawaii energy. Say hi. Hello there. All right, hi. excellent. Aloha. Good Aloha. job. Okay, Donna, you begin. What about your new app? What is it? So we actually have a new mobile app. This is the first that we've developed from Hawaiian Electric. And it's really a way to make it more convenient for a customer. So what you can actually do on this mobile app is look for outage information within your area. So if you have um, geolocation turned on your phone, you can see if, see if there is an outage that's nearby. So you can maybe possibly avoid traffic. Um, we can also provide notifications to people who have downloaded this app. So if there's some company information on a traffic advisory or if we need customers to conserve energy, we can actually send that notification out to them. Wow, that's great. That's great. So why are you holding the phone that way? I, I thought I was going to be able to actually show the mobile app <laughs> while I was here. Okay. So I actually brought my phone with me. Okay, excellent. So I could there show it is. everyone. There it is. Hold it a little higher. Hold it a little higher. If you hold it a there little higher. Go. Okay, now I get to see it. That's pretty good. Okay. Now I can download this either on my Apple or my iPhone? Yes. Okay, and I just go to the Play, the Play Store or, or the... Um, the Google Play Store. Google Play Store. And Apple iTunes. Or iTunes, okay. And what's it called when I go searching for so it? So you search for Hawaiian Electric or Hawaiian Electric Mobile. Okay, either way. All right, no, fine. Okay, and now when I get this, um, it's going to look at my, my coordinates, my GPS coordinates, know where I am. And it's going to tell me if there are any outages in my area. Right, so you can actually just click nearby outages, yeah. and there are no known outages near downtown areas, so it actually displays that. Okay. But it allows you to, with the touch of a finger, just go report an outage. Say by chance, if you're at home and you're, you want to report your outage, you can just do it straight from your phone. Just push a button. Just push a button. Because it knows where you are anyway. Well, actually, it doesn't have that information when you actually report it, so you actually do have to, have call to tell them where you are. You have to tell them. but. Mm -hmm. You, can, you don't have to call or look up the phone number. You can actually just, if you want to still call by phone, you can by hitting by phone. If you actually want to do it online, you don't have to go to our website. You can just use the app and click by web, and it takes you straight to actually report your outage. Can I have a little That's higher? Pretty. Just lift it up. Just lift it higher. Okay, hold higher. It up, yeah. higher. Hold it up. Hold it up higher. Go ahead. There, there, there you it go. is. There it is. A little higher, even so yet, you higher. See the screen? Oh, close to yeah, you. There you go. There it is. See it? Okay. Very good. Nice. Very, very professional app. So, you, you know, your press release, which I did look at this morning, just, this is hot news, you know, it's like scoop, you know. Um, your press release said you had other things in store that you were going to load up on this app. What are they? Well, yes. Um, our intent is actually If to it's secret, you have to tell us it's secret. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's secret. So uh, we're letting everyone know on ThinkTech <laughs> first. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> okay. But actually what we're hoping to do is add more features that are customer service related. So if you wanted to um, check your electric bill, you could do it from the app. So that is something we want to actually do later on in the future. And then also add in where our EV chargers are. Well, that's very important. Yes. And you guys important. are actually, it was, it's, I think it's next week, you're having uh, another christening, a, a, a blessing uh, for electric charger. Where is it now? It's not too far. It's on Evil A. Evil A, yeah. Yep. We're going to try to cover that. Yes, yeah. that would be great. It's in the morning of December, I want to say 6th or something? No. Yeah. August 30th. August, August 30th? Oh, next week, right? Next week. Okay, we're going we're gonna to try to be there and catch that. Yeah. Great. Because we like electric charges. We think every one you put in is a blessing, and that's why you should have a blessing. <laughs> we love them, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else about this? I can do this right now, huh? Yes, yeah, so you can go right now and download the app. Um, and then Fire. also, if you actually wanted to check any notifications, you can always click notifications, and you can see what new hot information we might have from the company displayed right there. Okay. So if there's road work that's going to be done or utility work, we'll likely send out a notification to customers. Okay. So I guess the, the most, uh, the thing that pops into my brain first is if, <clears throat> if my lights go out, I want to find out if, you know, yeah. what the scope of the outage is. I want to find out how, how big, how little, 
you know, what to do, your advice, whatever it is, and, that, and that I can get that, yeah? You're yes. Get estimates of when it's going to be turned back on? Yes. Yeah, right, good, yeah. yeah. Mm. And that would give me some comfort, yeah? Oh, there it is with a map. Yep. Tells you what's going on. It tells you what area is affected, the number of customers, and the estimated restore time. Excellent. This is very good. It is very good. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to Mike now for some uh, serious cross-examination. Ready, long? Donna? <laughs> uh, should I be scared? <laughs> how long has it been available now? It actually just got released to the public um, on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. But previous to that, we actually launched it out a little bit earlier. As a beta test. As a beta test for our employees. So what we wanted to do is we put it out in the stores, and we let our employees actually test it and give us feedback so that we can make small refinements before we actually announced it to everybody. And what's the traffic been like so far? Um, so far, I mean, we, we're getting a lot of positive feedback and we've got downloads. Um, I think for both, I mean, I think we're at like hundreds of downloads at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully as people find out more about it, they'll start downloading it. And then the 10,000 people that listen to this program. Oh, you're right. Download. Right. <laughs> but, it's also a good thing because that means there's not that many outages going on, right? <laughs> right. Very good. <laughs> well, after this show, I'm going to download it myself. Uh, it was, what was it now again? Hawaiian Electric or search for Hawaiian Electric Mobile. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Either on uh, iPhone or, uh, or Android. Android. Great. You have, you have any cross-examination models? No. I just want to do say, though, that uh, the work that she does and her team does on social media, especially for Hawaiian Electric, is really helpful. Uh, not only sharing the fun stuff when it comes to cooking tips and just good work that they've done, but especially in times of need when, you know, there is something that needs to be addressed that could be a, a hazardous situation. Yeah. You know, Hawaiian Electric does a heck of a job, and well, because of her leadership, they yeah. do a real nice job over there. In fact, on our way in the door, they were posting stuff, and I was like, hey, wow. this would be yeah. live talk, talk about breaking news right here. What I get out of it is you have to come back soon, Donna. I do? Yeah. yeah. Donna Moon, sure? Hawaiian Electric. Company. Yes, wow. I do. I do? So I get to become a regular like Marvin? Yeah, like Marvin. No, yeah. it's my first time. Oh, Speaking of Marvin, yeah. we're going we're gonna to see a video from Marvin. What do you got today, Marvin? Well, it, it kind of along the same lines of just, uh, you know, rolling out new and exciting stuff. So uh, we want to make sure that folks at home uh, continue their efforts to save energy, even on, on the grander scale when it comes to the companies doing so, you know, large scale commercial uh, entities. But right now we decided, you know, let's let's have a little more fun. Let's let's bring some more energy to it. Pun, no, intended. No pun intended. No, no pun intended. I wrote it down. It was intended. <laughs> and uh, you know, let's go ahead and and, and do a, a kind of uh, lift up, I should say, our our efforts in in terms of you know getting the word out. And so this week, uh, folks have been noticing we have new commercials on air. Uh, our website, we got a brand new website. We're going to kick that in uh, well, within the next 24 hours. Uh, we bought our, this. I mean, you see the That'll logo right here. Hawaii Energy. Th yes, this is this is O-R-G. Pluggy. As I kind of try and do this, we brought Pluggy to life. We had full mascots. It was going to be visiting the Keiki as well as other types of trade shows and stuff and all the good stuff. And since you had asked, let's go take a look at the highlights on this video right okay, here. Okay, here we go. And she's back. Seriously, she was here an hour ago. Make a choice, energy waster! You know, she'll get a rebate if she trades up that old fridge. Pick the Mac salad. That's two weeks old. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's stop energy waste. Learn more at hawaiienergy.com. Ah! Have I told you how much I love being a smart strip? Only a thousand times. I can't help it. We're so much better than regular power strips. We can turn off several devices at a time simply by shutting down an item plugged in our smart outlet. No flipping a switch, no wasted energy. <sighs> if only everyone knew about smart strips. Well, not everyone is as smart as we. Learn about smart strips and more at hawaiienergy.com.
Okay, we're back. What a great, that is a great film, very cute. Um, if you want to look at the website, look at hawaiienergy.com. Okay, Marvin, what else do you want to tell us about it? Well, I do want to remind folks that if you took a look at that, head over to one of those uh, ad walls, you know, take a picture, post it to Instagram. Don't forget to tag us at my Hawaii Energy at My Hawaii Instagram and two tickets to it's not this weekend this weekend they travel to Massachusetts to play UMass but the home opener is the next weekend let's go Bose and have a good time doing it you know Hawaii Energy don't forget uh, to save energy at home as well as at work and just have a great time doing it yeah. wish I'd said that Marvin Buenconseo and Donna Moon thank you so much for joining us and Mike I think we're going to take a break now you Sounds ready good. yep he's ready thank you both aloha thank you this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom, is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others. And in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Bingo, we're back. We told you to come back. Mike said that. I did. That's Mike Hamnett, my co-host and co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, too. And he's going to talk to you later about what happens on the 28th. It's magic on the 28th, magic. Okay, but the second half of the show here, uh, we're talking to Brendan Morioka of Hawaiian Electric, and he is the general manager of electrification of transportation, which is no small feat. We're going to talk to you about that. Absolutely. Are you ready for the conversation? Yes, sure I am. Okay. And, th and then there's uh, Riza Gorbani of the UH Renewable Energy Design Lab. We can talk about science and design uh -huh. and transportation and energy all together now. Uh -huh. Who wants to go first? Okay. You want to <laughs> Brendan, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Well, I mean, I, I just joined Hawaii Electric about six weeks ago um, to help with program. their electrification of transportation initiative. And it's really an effort to uh, <clears throat> move away from the use of fossil fuels, more electric vehicles, uh, electric buses. You know, and every, whenever people think about electrification of transportation, they think about EVs. But that's not the only area that we're going to be looking into. Right? We're, we're going to be dealing with um, electric buses and how we can get some of our both public municipal buses and some of our private services uh, transitioning to electric buses. How can we work with the DOT on, on electrifying some of the operations at either the harbors or at the airport? So for me, it's a, it's a really exciting time. There's a lot of momentum and a lot of support, both in the community uh, for, for electric vehicles, electrification of transportation, but also politically. Um, at, at our legislature, many of the stakeholders um, are looking at the city council here in Honolulu, very supportive of electrification of transportation. So for me, it's a, it's a very exciting time to be a part of this. Yeah. It's a new position, huh? New position that Hawaiian Electric created um, as a part of their uh, transformational efforts to, to really uh, look at new business opportunities as well as how, how is the utility supposed to look in the future. The, the utility of the past is, is kind of, uh, you know, the core mission is still there, provide electricity, keep the lights on, keep people safe. Uh, but it's, it's really an effort to look at how the utility can better um, serve its customers and uh, looking at other opportunities and other avenues that, that we can also play in uh, that is not necessarily just what people view as the traditional utility. You know, it's, it's visionary. It's, I think it's part of, um, you know, the, the vision uh, that was expressed a couple of years ago from 
flying electric to move forward in this kinds of things, and it's really happening. So these are good times, aren't? They? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, and it, it all starts from the top. You know, we have a very um, uh, visionary board um, that that uh, oversees a company, but we have folks like Connie Lau and and Alan Oshima and our exe our, our entire executive team who really bought into this new vision of a, a brand new utility, and so. And and that's that's one of the reasons why um, you know I kind of jumped at the opportunity to be a part of the Hawaiian. Yeah, it sounds team. great. And you come at it with yeah. all your experience in transportation. No fooling around. Hopefully, I can help. Yeah. Hopefully, you can help. Yeah. We'll be watching. Sure. We'll I know. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be calling you down for more. Sure. Okay. Let's so let's get a let's get a situation here on Riza. Riza, what are you doing there at the UH Renewable Energy Design Lab? Has anything to do with Brennan's work? Oh yeah. I actually, uh, what we are more interested in is in integrating more renewable to the grid and uh, I, green transportation or electric transportation is one of the uh, most important mm -hmm. solutions or uh, uh, of adding more renewables to the grid and I'm really glad that uh, HECO is thinking that or I'm, I, I'm pushing towards electric transportation because uh, not is not only vital for our economy in future uh, to have more electric transportation like uh, Brennan said, uh, not only EVs, but different type. Uh, also, it's important to think about it now uh, as we move towards 100% renewable yeah, energy yeah, yeah. portfolio. So what does design mean? Is design like HNEI? At HNEI, mm -hmm. they got guys who are de developing fuel cells and batteries and mm -hmm. what have you. Are you doing that, or are you doing something more in, in the context of design? So yeah, we, we are mostly interested in solutions or innovative solutions. Like or, what? Like, uh, for example, uh, how do you use AI, artificial intelligence, to help AI? You, uh, yeah. Are you an AI person? Yeah, we... Uh, Holy we, moly, Mike, <laughs> we got an AI person here at the table. How do you like that? Sharon, did you know this? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not... I'm, I'm, okay, okay. I'm the expert in AI. You're the real intelligence. Yes. We have plenty of people working on AI, but AI, for example, one of the solutions is, I mean, one of the things that you work on, how do you use AI in order to help the decision making, for example, in finding your best spot to charge, uh, or how do you actually um, uh, provide services, or me, I mean, uh, between the customers that they have renewable energy that, that they want to sell, or or and customers that want to charge their vehicle, right? How do you understand the driving portfolio and driving cycles and how they are related to charging profiles and how those charging profiles are related to the, for example, the saturation of the of the lines in electric grid and so on, and how the reliability, for example, is interested is is uh, related to all of these big decisions that we are making. And in future, uh, we will have more autonomous driving cars in the street. Like in future, I mean, in 30 years, um, even in maybe 10 Did you years. Say 30 years. Maybe maybe in I 10 years. I thought you years. said 20 years. I said 30 Did you say years. 10 years. 30 years. <laughs> Five. I, 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 I mean, if you go to Pittsburgh, you see them <laughs> already. <laughs> but in Hawaii, I would say, uh, so, uh, so all of these questions are important to be actually uh, looked at now, and then you will recommend to the uh, people that are uh, developing technologies to work on the technologies that make more money for them. So let's assume you come up with a solution, yeah. a design solution <coughs> of one right. kind, including tech technological or yeah. social Let's or charges, organizational, or whatever it might yeah. be, to improve um, electrification of transportation. What does the UH Renewable Energy Design Lab do with that solution? Uh, who do you call? Do you call, do you call Brennan? Of course, I mean, what? <laughs> you yeah, we had anyway? examples, yeah, we had uh, examples. I have my phone number for now. <laughs> <laughs> if, they, if they pick up their phone, <laughs> we will be more than happy to discuss with them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, uh, my group uh, and other groups at US, uh, I mean, my group, we already met a couple, many times with, with HECO. We are also mis discussing about technology right now with, with HECO. Uh, what HECO's uh, priority sometimes is different than my priority. So basically, uh, what we are doing at the university is creating a new technology. Maybe the first customer is not HECO, it's somebody else, and the HECO can adapt it in 10 years, right? So, uh, so sometimes HECO plays an important role in uh, letting us to run it, I mean, from university, a pilot plan. And uh, from the, that pilot project, you can just 
uh, go to the um, uh, scale up. Uh, how long has the design lab been in existence? Nine years. Nine years. Yeah. And how long you been with it? Nine years. <laughs> He started. Yeah, I started. Okay, there's a symbol symbolic connection. There. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, one thing that strikes me is is that um, you know the electrification of transportation, not only cars but everything, is going to have a profound effect in our lives. And uh, I know you guys think about that, but you know when I think about that, it hurts my head because I have no idea how it's going to affect my life. I just know it's going to affect my life. You can't comment. Well, I mean, you know, I said I have joined HECO about six weeks ago, and it's profoundly impacted my life. My head spins almost every day just because... <laughs> I knew we had the, something in common. I, know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, more, the more I learn about this, um, and I'm an engineer by trade, but I've never been on the utility side, and I'm actually a civil engineer, not an electrical engineer. So learning the utility side and the power side uh, has, has been very interesting to me. And, and so I, I leave every day with my head spinning because there's <laughs> so much for me to learn right now. Yeah. Um, but but it, is, it is so exciting. I mean, you know, we talk, Lisa talks about new technologies and we have a lot of very intelligent people working at HECO on, on, and dealing with a lot of different uh, technologies, initiatives, proposals that, that um, are generated both internal within HECO but also externally where people are continually coming to um, Hawaiian Electric to uh, make proposals on, on how they might be able to help the, the utility really grow as, as a more modern grid. And so, you know, Riza kind of touched upon it a little bit, but ultimately if we have more electric vehicles uh, out there charging and using those batteries, you know, it's, it's really more like a, it can become like a virtual power plant where we're actually communicating with different power sources um, and whether it's the heaters at the homes or the batteries in the cars at homes, uh, or at the workplace, creating a much more smarter grid, communicating within itself so that we can better manage the way that power yeah. is, is flowing back and forth. And I think that's the, that's right. the end game for, for many of the stakeholders. But for, I mean, for me, it's, it's really exciting to see the kind of growth, especially in the last couple of years, of people's interest in buying electric vehicles. I mean, it's the, the sales of e electric vehicles uh, increased by about 30% just over the last year itself, whereas um, car sales in general have kind of remained a little flat mm. over the last couple of years. So, you know, that that, that just kind of shows that there is a growing interest in electric vehicles, um, whether it's for, uh, you know, the green sustainability side of, of people's interests or uh, there is an actual cost savings too, right? You, you end up, your overall energy um, portfolio as, a, as an individual resident actually is supposed to be coming down. You, you may pay a little bit more in, in your electric bill, but your overall expense for energy as a whole, whether it's fuel consumption or whatever, or maintenance of your cars, all of that is, is meant to save the customer money. And at the end of the day, that's what the utilities in the business for us to help yeah. customers. So Mike, we have to see where things are going too. Uh, Absolutely. Friends, because they kind of got blindsided by the rooftop solar. And the same thing could happen with electric vehicles without sort of looking ahead and anticipating what the market's going to do with that. Right. And then what what kind of other benefits like storage that the electric vehicles might provide. And so you actually raise a very good point in, in that the PUC actually is, is um, asking Hawaiian Electric to provide an electrification of transportation strategy and roadmap uh, uh, in the, by the end of first quarter next year. So in March, we're going to be uh, providing some kind of, of roadmap that Hawaiian Electric believes is uh, in the best interest of of all of our um, utilities territories, but in order to accomplish that strategy, it, it we Hawaiian Electric is being asked to develop the strategy, but really it's a strategy for the state. Right. And there are many, many other stakeholders who have interests or who have responsibilities if we're to achieve some of those goals. So, uh, by developing our plan, we will be including a lot of our stakeholders from from the very beginning of the development, so that we're we're going in building a direction, building a strategy that everybody's going to buy in at the end of the day when we submit it. So it's not just a Hawaiian electric strategy. Sure. It's really a state strategy. No, but we really appreciate the fact that you're out there doing it at the front end. You know, That's the fun part. Yeah, right? it's great. Yeah. And I mean, it's leadership. You know? But, you know, I wanted to ask you, Mike, as a guy who, you know, sort of sees this from the university point of view, just, you know, by way of career, um, where do you see the connections here? One of the questions that's going to be posed in the uh, Energy Day conference um, just on the 28th, coming up soon of August, 
um, is, uh, you know, who, who should take the four? Who should be out in the front? And on this issue, on transportation, the electrification of transportation, cars and everything else, um, we should have a sense of that. And I wonder, you know, from the university point of view, from the university point of view, who should be, you know, calling the shots? Who should be out in the front? Who should be coming up with stuff? I sense as a de facto matter, it is Hawaiian Electric. But what's your thought about that? I mean, that? one of the things, and this, we're going to talk about this at the Hawaii Clean Energy Day um, on the 28th, is that tr the trouble with transportation is that it's so broken up. I mean, mm -hmm. in, the in the electric sector, we've got the 800-pound gorilla that's controlled by the PUC, and so providing some leadership and direction there, there's somebody to steer the ship. But in the transportation, there are just so many stakeholders and so many actors that it's hard to see where it's going. And I think, uh, and we're going to talk about this on the 28th, it's finding leadership in the various strategies to move the transportation clean energy mission forward is going to be the trick. And it's not going to be any one actor because we don't have a we, we don't have a utilities or transportation commission. Yeah. So it's um, it's going to be it's going to, the trick is going to be to encourage and support all of the actors in taking yeah. the various strategies that we've got available to and us. And I think I think to your point, you know, the, a lot of the 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 major stakeholders has already bought into that approach because uh, Hawaiian Electric worked with a number of the different uh, entities, created what's called Drive Electric Hawaii. It's a coalition of Hawaiian Electric and um, KIUC, so right. it's so it's your utility statewide, but also the State Department of Transportation, DBET. Um, you also have Ulupona and Blue Planet Foundation who are a part of this this coalition, and it is meant to see what we can do as policymakers, as influencers on trying to drive e uh, EV adoption here in Hawaii. And the th and the thing is, is that electric vehicles are one of the few avenues for getting clean tra clean energy into transportation. Because biofuels hasn't gone anywhere, um, and you know bike share is going to help, and car share is going to help, and pedestrian uh, improvements are going to help. But still, it's it's the automobiles that are the, that are the problem, and and the trucks and the buses. Even though Beaky is extremely successful. So yes. Far. So have far. you Beakied? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list. Well, it's a confluence. You know, we we started out with uh, looking at energy in general and trying to go with renewables and. There was this sort of elephant in the room. It's transportation. Uh, you know, with, as I recall, it was $6 billion a year. It was sending out for oil for our cars, mm -hmm. you know. And we weren't really attending to that. And nobody was coming up with big solutions for that. But so, I mean, I, I compliment Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian Electric for, you know, coming up with this and coming up with you <laughs> and, and moving in this direction, coming up with ideas. And so, at the end of the day, it's a matter of socializing the, those ideas among all the stakeholders mm -hmm. and getting you know, consensus over it. But, you know, even in the consensus, somebody has to speak first. Really? Yeah. <laughs> We're trying. So, uh, so Reza, where, where do you fit? Yeah. Where do you fit in all this? You know, uh, I mean, for example, we had a uh, project from, um, uh, uh, from the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, transportation uh, 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 from University of Central Florida. We are looking at different technologies of electric trans uh, transportation. For example, and also different problems. For example, how this um, charging and discharging of the batteries to provide service to the grid impact the lifetime of the battery of your electric car. Uh, we looked at how uh, this um, high penetration of electric vehicle can um, can impact the grid and how the grid stability issues in, in impact the decision making of charging profiles. Well, uh, it goes so to the, the, the whole thing about technology in general about energy and technology right. is you, so, you're always worried that you, if you don't wrap around the latest transportation, I mean, latest technology, you know, you can't keep up and you get left behind because you're not wrapping around the last thing that happened. And sometimes you just can't do that. Right. But with you on, in the consensus model, with you and the team play as a stakeholder, uh, you can help us keep track of the advancing technology, right. and that way, I mean, only that way, we're going to learn how to do this in the most efficient manner. Yeah, yeah we are interested. I mean, uh, to the cutting edge technology, we are interested in to see what technologies might show up in five years, for example, or what technologies make sense, or what solutions make sense, and what we will expect in the next five or ten years. I mean, you plan for it, uh, or when the, this uh, network uh, or coalition are 
of working on it. So they expect, okay, these are the technologies, so we plan based on this expected technologies. Because everything will be connected, everything, uh, the, I mean, the data will be available. And uh, so uh, what I see UH role or College of Engineering and HNEI, for example, HNEI is a little bit different as they're doing big projects or in big implementations. What, what was I see UH, I mean, College of Engineering role is the uh, mostly innovation. Uh, or fundamental uh, research uh, of the problem. Okay, don't stop. Okay, so yeah, we'll be we'll be having this conversation yes, again and again, sure. with you guys. So, Mike, uh, ju you know, just so everybody's clear, what exactly is happening on August twenty eighth, and how does it relate to this conversation today? It's the ninth annual Clean Energy Day uh, for the Energy Policy Forum, and it's going to focus specifically on transportation, and uh, it's. Uh, uh, pathways to clean transportation. There's going to be uh, panels in the morning and the afternoon, and then there's going to be a facilitated session in the afternoon, and there are going to be people uh, displaying uh, products there, including Tesla and uh, Hart and I think the bike, uh, bike share folks. So it's, uh, it's going to be a good program, and it's at the Lanakili Y, starts at 9, and uh, runs, until, uh, runs until 6 p.m. with uh, sort of a palhana at the end. But it's going to be a good program. Hope you guys are there. I'll be there. I knew you would. I'll be there too, yeah. Good. All right. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Appreciate yeah. it, Brennan. Great yeah. to have Thank you here, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Good to Aloha till next time. Aloha. Yeah.